Hello, I'm Megan. I'm Colin. And we are the hosts of Pet Sitter Confessional, an open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Thank you to our sponsors, Pet Sitters Associates, the Florida Pet Services Association, and our newest Patreon members, Liz, Kathy, Barbara, and Kristen. Woo! Thank you guys so much for supporting the show and finding value in it. And if you too, listener, have found value in the almost 400 episodes now, Ooh. you can go to petsitterconfessional.com slash support and see all the ways that you can help us out. When you think of being profitable, what do you think of? When I think of it, I think basically only in terms of finances. <laughs> How much money am I making? How much money am I taking home? So today we're going to talk about how do you define being profitable in your business? And one way to answer that is to determine whether you have money left over after you subtract your spending from your income. Again, we all think about the financial aspect of being profitable. There's even a book called Profit First, where you are thinking about numbers and how much you are taking home and how much you are spending every month. But what are some of the other answers to this? Are there other ways to think of profitability other than money? And I'm, I'm not exactly sure when I first heard of this, but we're going to take the word profit and we're going to break it out into an acronym. So who doesn't love acronyms, right? <laughs> so profit stands for six things. Popularity, relationships, opportunities, fun, income, and tangibles. So popularity. This is about building a brand, about name recognition and gaining a positive reputation in the market that you're trying to corner and the people who you're trying to go after. So popularity. Do people know about your business? Are you highly regarded in your community? Do people know what you stand for and what you're an expert in? This is important in both the digital and physical spaces. So yes, we post on social media and Facebook and people know our name from there. But it's also important that you connect eyes with other people in your community so that you can have that positive rapport, that reputation, that word of mouth, that positive word of mouth that we all rely on within our clients and potential clients. Well, and it's one thing that people know who you are, but then that second part of what do they think about you? And I know we've talked about public relations as an aspect of running a business before on that podcast, but it really is about understanding and knowing the narrative about when people say the name of your business or the name or your name, what are they associating with it? What feelings, what aspects, what emotions come along with that? When people reach out to you, they go, oh, I've heard amazing things about you. Or is it, well, you know, I, I don't know what else to say, but, you know, here I am. It, we, we obviously want to be with the first one. So when we go through our business, we, we're looking for not just getting the most eyes on our business, but making sure that we are communicating the right message with them. This also does come into play when you are choosing basically your brand kit. So your font, your colors that you're choosing for your business, your logo, all of these things are wrapped up into how you want people to feel about your business. When they see your website, what, evo what emotions do you want to evoke in them? When they see your flyers or maybe you took out a billboard, what kind of pictures or things are you putting on there that is going to represent you in a positive light? The R in profit stands for relationships. Again, establishing and nurturing those meaningful connections with clients, with community members, and with others that you come in contact with, other business owners that you may want to partner with. Who, who can you call when you're in trouble? Is it another pet sitter that you network with in your same area? Is it a, a statewide association that you are a part of or even a national one? Who do you go to for help? Are there people that you are reaching out to when you have questions about your business? Do you have people that you refer out to? So not just who you go to when you have questions, but people that come to you and you build those partnerships. Relationships in a business where we never, never see anybody can be can be hard to nurture and to grow, but it's important and it's integral to make sure that we feel and not just feel, but that we are connected to other people that we can, yes, commiserate with, but also share ideas, bounce concepts off of it, see how they are operating, where they're struggling and feed back into them so we can all be learning and growing along the way. Just because we have a business that makes us money doesn't mean that we have people that are filling our lives or relationships that are filling us and feeding back into us to make us a more holistic individual. At the end of the day, focusing on relationships allows you to build a broader connected community that's going to help and support you as you go through your, your time running your business. It also allows you to take opportunities as they come along. 
And that's the O in profit, identifying and seizing new chances for growth or expansion or collaboration, partnering with businesses in your community, or maybe you do dog walks, but you want to open a doggy daycare, or maybe you want to grow exponentially and hire a lot of people or just take on a a new concept in your business. Maybe you want to start events or weddings or pet taxi or dog adventure hikes, (laughs) poop scooping. I even saw somebody is trying to get a poop scooping off the ground in their business. But what new things are you excited about? Do you have three things that you're working on in your business? Or do you have some projects that you're working on or you want to work on but haven't really committed the time yet? Or are there other businesses that you haven't reached out to? Or are businesses approaching you and they're coming to you with opportunities of wanting to partner on events? Or maybe a local shelter reached out and said, hey, can you walk some dogs for us as part of volunteering? There are so many different opportunities that we can take on as they come up. A profitable business has opportunities to take advantage of. And this means that you as the business owner, as the operator, need to be able to identify those opportunities as they come onto your plate. And then knowing when to seize, when to jump onto them, when to take advantage of that. Because of a profitable business, in the context that we're talking about of this this acronym, is, is seeking after opportunities to continue to grow, expand, learn. This is where changing and adapting to local market shifts and local client demands is really what this aspect is about of going, I'm not going to always operate the exact same way for year after year. But how do I know what I'm going to change into? I know that by yes, setting a five, 10 year plan, but then seizing opportunities as they come along because we are open to newness, open to new ideas, having this growth mindset that allows us to see things, recognize when we have a connection and then take advantage of that so that when partnerships do come up, whenever we have new ideas for a new service that we want to offer or expand into a new area, we see that as a growth opportunity and we can lean into that. The F in profit stands for fun. It's ensuring that your work environment, our jobs, are enjoyable, that we still are engaged with them, that you're not checked out. And that's particularly important for your employees as well, making sure that they are enjoying what they do, that they aren't dreading this next visit because it's five dogs and four cats and 18 chickens, making sure that their morale is boosted as well so that they can be productive and efficient so that you can run the best company that you can. Really asking yourself, do I have fun at work? Do I find joy in this? Because we have to be honest, sometimes the work sucks. It just does. Sometimes that puppy has pooped all over the kennel. It's smeared all over the walls. It's on the floor. It's wiggling and it's getting up, jumping up on you. And you have to clean that up. And now you're 20 minutes late to your meet and greet and everything just goes downhill. So are you connected to something deeper, something that actually brings you joy in the work that you do? Because fun is fleeting, but joy is everlasting. And joy is something that we can lean into and find and connect at a much deeper level to help us push through those times. If all we were searching for was fun, none of us would actually be in this business because it's not fun sometimes. But we do get something out of this. And that's that joy that we have to tap in from time to time or lean into when times get hard. And understanding that if we have staff, we need to help them connect with that, connect them to the bigger mission and values that we have as a company so that they can approach things with with, with a smile and with a go-to attitude of knowing this might not be fun but I'm connected to something bigger and I can move forward through this. Hey everyone, this is Heidi with Heidi and Hope Pet Services. I'm the treasurer of the Florida Pet Service Association. FPSA was founded in 2021 and became a 501c3 nonprofit in 2022. And our first ever conference happens later this year in August 25th through the 27th in Orlando, Florida. We are so excited to help advocate the animal industry standards through collaboration of the animal industry, through education and camaraderie. We look forward to seeing fellow Floridians and any pet care industry professionals that want to visit the Sunshine State. The I in profit stands for income. This is what we all think about when we we think of the word profit. It's the revenue generating income, the financial gains through the pet sitting, the dog walking, the pet taxi, whatever you do. You knew we'd have to talk about this one eventually because your business should make you money and it's okay. That is the point of it. You are not running a charity. You are running a business. So you need to be wise about 
your prices and how you go about getting payments from clients, not chasing them down, making sure that your business is running as efficient as possible so that you can make as much money as possible because it it is okay to make money. That is why you are here. You are here to put food on your table, to provide for your family if you have them or your employees or just you. You know, your business should support the lifestyle that you want to live. If it doesn't, then you need to increase your prices. You need to go back to that budget and say, what do I need to be making to cover my taxes, my expenses, and to have profit left over? Whatever your lifestyle is, if you want to make $5 a year or $5 million a year, you need to be doing the budget and making sure that your prices appropriately reflect what what kind of life you want to live. Yeah, repeat after me. My business should support the lifestyle I want to live and that it's okay. You have absolution to make a profit in your business. As care providers, as passionate people, we all say, oh, well, we would do this even if they didn't pay us. Or maybe we would pay for the opportunity to take care of their pets. Megan, as you said, we're not running charities, though. We do have bills to pay. We do have mouths to feed, including our own. We have goals and things that we want to accomplish in our life. And that means we do need to make money. And so not being afraid to sit down, look at your prices and have a very tough, hard conversation with yourself and going, do my prices cover my costs in my business and leave money left over to me? And this is where our understanding of costs in running a dog walking and pet care company can be a little difficult because we don't always put together the costs. Well, my driving, oh, that can't cost that much. Oh, my my insurance, well, that's really not that big of a deal. I I bought some gear. Oh, I have this equipment. I've got this stuff. I got this stuff. It really adds up. And so understanding is the money that I'm spending being covered by the visits that I'm doing, and do I have money left over to put in my pocket? It's that simple. It really is. And knowing that your time is valuable. You are a valuable person, and your time is worth something. Make sure that whatever you are being paid and compensated in return for the services that you provided is worth it at the end of the day, for you and who you are and the, the, the quality and the peace of mind that you're bringing to your clients. Because ultimately, this business does cost. It's, you know, if you're not having a brick and mortar store, there's not a ton of expenses, but you are still having to buy leashes and first aid kits and tons and tons and tons of shoes. <laughs> and because poop bags. You are, and poop bags because you are a dog walker and pet sitter. So there are, there, there are physical and material assets that you are acquiring through this. And so that's what the T is in profit. It's the tangibles. It's the equipment, the property, the, the inventory. If you are selling leashes or collars or whatever, it is. And it can contribute to the overall success of the business. So it's important to have the best. Do you have the best leashes for the style of business that you run? If it's a dog adventure hike business, you're not going to use little little tiny leashes that are made for small dogs. You're going to have the thick ones that are, are durable and last long and clean well. Do you have the best shoes? <laughs> we walk sometimes 10, 20,000 steps a day, and it's a lot. So do are your shoes keeping up with you? <laughs> and I will, say, I will say that as far as shoes go, uh, there is no one best shoe. I see this question all the time in Facebook groups, including our own, and we get it. What's the best shoe? The best shoe is the best shoe for you. There you go. Best shoe is the best shoe for you. We'll make that into some sort of t-shirt. Go to – the best advice that we can give is go to an athletic store and get fitted for a, a proper shoe. Do a true shoe <laughs> – so many things that rhyme. Do a true shoe fitting and make sure that you understand what kind of arch support you need, what kind of inserts you may need to get, what kind of shoes recommended by a professional who, who does this day and day. Go to a running store to do this if you must. But that is where you need to go to make sure that your shoe, your footwear wear matches your feet, your gait, your walking style, and the activities that you are wanting to do in your life and in your business. Well, and really that applies to anything in your business. So mm-hmm. if you are choosing software and you're going, well, which one is the best? Which one should I go with? Well, nobody knows your business like you do. Nobody knows your foot like you do. And so go to a shoe store to have your foot sized. Go to the best software. Try them out. See which one works for how you operate in your business. Because having high quality and good things in your business is going to help you run a better business. It's going to exceed your client's expectations and your own expectations as well. You're probably going to wake up one day and go, ah, 
I love having the best of the best and these great things. And yes, they cost, but at the end of the day, the peace of mind that they bring me and the peace of mind that they bring my clients is priceless. Or the quality of life that it gives back to you. If you're using cheap, cruddy, disposable leashes and ones that constantly break and you're worrying about them and there's a strain on your body and on your arms and you don't wear good shoes, you don't replace them frequently and you have knees and and lower back pain – investing in those things is a, an amazing way to make sure that your quality of life is really good. Because when you wake up and you go, oh, I don't want to do that walk today because it's, it's, it's really long and my knees always hurt at the end of it. Maybe I won't do it. Instead going, well, is there a way that I can get better about this? And knowing, okay, if I seek after the high quality things, the things that actually fit me, again, it's not about, oh, go out and spend $2,000 on a pair of shoes. Because a $2,000 pair of shoes that's not the best fit for you is a waste of money. So don't just spend money to think that you're going to get the best. Make sure, Megan, like you said with the software, make sure that the money that you do spend fits the way that you operate, that the way that you want to run your business. Because that, that is the best money spent is when it matches how you operate and who you are. So that's the PROFIT acronym, and it really serves as a reminder that success in our businesses is not only financial, even though we think the word PROFIT is just financial, but it's also aspects that contribute to our overall growth and sustainability and efficiency in our business. Something that does help you be profitable is Pet Sitters Associates. As pet care professionals, your clients trust you to care for their furry family members. And that's why Pet Sitters Associates is here to help. For over 20 years, they've provided thousands of members with quality pet care insurance. Because you work in the pet care industry, you can take your career to the next level with flexible coverage options, client connections, and complete freedom in running your business. Learn why Pet Sitters Associates is the perfect fit for you and get a free quote when you join by clicking Membership Pet Sitter Confessional and using the discount code CONFESSIONAL when you go to check out. Check out the benefits of membership and insurance once again at PetsitLLC.com. We have covered what the acronym PROFIT is. So what is costing you profit in your business? What are the roadblocks that you are coming up against that is that are preventing you from being the most efficient business that you can be? The biggest one has got to be poor boundaries in running your business. Never saying no. Maybe I, I think one that's been increasingly common that we have to continue to push back on our clients is letting our clients add on things that really set you up for failure. Right? These are where they make little tiny requests that normally where you wouldn't do, but you try and do that to accommodate them because you're worried about them leaving you or not booking you again. So maybe that's, well, I don't normally let the cat outside, but this client wants me to. So maybe I'll just do it this one time. Or maybe it's, they want you to leave the back door open so that the neighbor kid can come in and grab some, something on a Tuesday. Well, I wouldn't normally do that, but man, this isn't a really good neighborhood. I, I, this client really said that they liked me and they heard a lot of good things about me. So I'm going to accommodate them so that they, they like me and they continue to use my business. What this does is it actually ends up robbing you of joy. Remember that F? Remember the fun part of profitable? Fun needs to be equated to joy here because you keep doing – this keeps you from doing things that you actually want to be doing. You know in your heart of hearts that it's not the best idea. It's not the best option. It's not the best thing for you and your business, but you're doing it anyway. So you're living a, a lie at that point, and you're living counter – to your beliefs, your goals, your personal values. And we, the longer we live outside of that in, 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 in some other world, <laughs> the, 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 the less joy that we're going to have and the more like we are, likely we are to burn out from this. I had just posted this quote on Facebook and Instagram this past weekend, but it says, if someone gets upset because you set boundaries, it's more evidence that the boundary is needed. And that is so true. <laughs> Can you hear me clapping? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is true. I mean, we we are not we are not in the business to please everybody. We are not in the business to serve every cat, dog, fish, lizard, snake out there. We need to be hyper selective and niche down in our services. There are enough clients for everyone, and so we we need to be selective because when we aren't, that's when we start having that compassion fatigue, that burnout, those those poor boundaries. We we keep saying yes, 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 yes all the time, and we don't say no. That is one of the roadblocks that prevents us from really being a true profitable business. And another one is low prices. Going back to what that word profit usually means to a lot of us is... Income, yeah. 
yeah, is income. Your, your pricing dictates a lot about how you run your business. Again, if you are not able to buy the best of the best things, it's probably because you need to take a look at your pricing again. Is, is, it, is it reflective of the lifestyle you want to lead, the things you want to buy, the charities or the activism that you want to give back to? You know, if your prices are too low, you're not making enough money. If you're booking yourself too much, you're not going to be able to have the space that you need to have fun and bring joy into your work and ultimately fulfill that personal satisfaction that we really need. Because the job can really only provide so much, but we cannot be all consumed in this job where we don't have hobbies, we don't do other things. That's such an amazing point, Megan. I'm glad that you brought that up because our business is most of it's most of our lives, right? We are so passionate about this that we find ourselves. What's that running joke? I quit my nine to five so I could work twenty four seven. That's not really a bragging right, right? It's really not. We we need to. We must be connected to something outside of our business. And unfortunately, when our prices are set so low, it means that we have to book ourselves from six a.m. to ten p.m. three hundred sixty five days a year. Because we have to work that much in order to get what we want or what we need. But understanding, if I raised everything by a dollar, two dollars, how many fewer visits would I be required to do in a day? Then what could I do with that time? What opportunities am I missing out? Again, profitable. What opportunities am I missing out on because my prices are so low so I have to work constantly in order to meet that. If I worked less, I might have more opportunities to be open up to explore things in my business or in my own personal life. And even those sitters who say, I, I do this on the side, this is not my full-time job or my career, I, ju- I just do this for a little bit of extra money, but even more so because you are taking your precious time when you're not at your normal nine to five, you could be out skydiving or or skiing or putting together a puzzle, whatever, but you're spending your time reading a book. You're, you're spending your time with the pets. So it's even more so how much you should be charging your worth and what your budget dictates. So don't undervalue your time when you are really giving up opportunities that you could be doing other things. Another roadblock is having vague mission and goals and values for your business. It ultimately means you don't really know which opportunities are good fits or which relationships you should invest in, which businesses you should be partnering with because you don't have those clearly lined out. It really makes it harder to focus when you don't know which rabbit you're chasing. I wanted to take a moment, especially on this, because finding a good mission statement for your for your business is incredibly clarifying. So I want to give three examples here that I kind of roughed out into see which one you connect with or what you, you would want to do. So the first one is our mission is to provide a holistic pet care experience that prioritizes the well-being, happiness and safety of your pet with dedicated and personalized dog walking and pet sitting services. We aim to enhance your pet's quality of life and bring peace of mind to you as a pet parent. I think this is a fine mission. It's a bit vague and a bit generic because we all want the well-being of the pet and peace of mind for the pet parent. So let's, let's get a little bit more focused here. How about this one? We are committed to ensuring the safety and security of all pets under our care. Our mission is to offer peace of mind to pet owners, knowing that their furry family members are in a safe, competent, and loving hands. We aim to maintain a professional standard in all our service, using the best practices in pet care and following all regulations and guidelines meticulously. The focus of this mission statement is safety. Now, where did this come from? The owner is concerned with safety. So from them flows the mission statement that the company then follows. If this is something that you have in your business, you're able to make really good decisions. Does this investment help me run a safer business? Does this education allow me to provide safer services? And then I kind of like this last one here. Our mission extends beyond individual pets to building pet-friendly communities. We are committed to encouraging responsible pet ownership, promoting pet adoption, and participating in community events. We aim to foster a community where pets and their owners feel connected, supported, and understood. The focus on this one? Community. Now, how would a pet business go about doing this? Well, you could have a small percentage of every of all of your proceeds go towards an adoption agency or go towards a rescue or go towards some other mission that you can connect with in your local community to see this through. Whatever you prioritize, whatever values you bring, 
make sure that your business reflects those and make them apparent so that when decisions come up, when opportunities are put on your plate, you can know this is a good one for me, this is not a good one for me, and you can clearly navigate those decisions. Because when you aren't clear on what you want for your business, clients certainly aren't going to be clear (laughs) on what you offer or what your business is even doing in the wild. It leads to confusing marketing messaging. It really Mm. does. You know, you bring in clients that aren't actually a good fit because you as the business owner are not clear on what you want. So you just try to, to grab everybody as they come in. It confuses people about what you do. It ultimately, though, wastes your time. It wastes their time. And you end up having bad relationships with clients because you are not niching down. You are not serving exactly who you want to be serving. And this sets you up for failure because when you are not connected with the right clients, it means that your services are not a good fit for them and they aren't going to be happy. Sure, there's a small chance that you'll be able to do enough education, outreach, and working with them to bring them over to help them understand how you actually are a good fit. But that's a really risky business. You want to make sure that everything is laid out plain, clearly communicated and on the table so that they know what they're getting into and exactly how they can help you. So confusing marketing messaging just really – it really muddies the the, the water and starts that relationship off on a bad foot. Again, that, that are in profit. We want to make sure that our relationships are starting with honesty, with open and with clarity in everything that we're saying. One way you don't have clarity is offering too many services, which can be another roadblock to ultimately being a profitable business. It adds the unnecessary complexity of, okay, I offer a 15-minute, 20-minute, 30-minute, 45-minute, 60-minute dog walk, pet sitting visit, drop in, quick potty, what, like, what... (laughs) All of these terms are very confusing to the potential client who's never had a pet sitter before. And if you offer too many of these services, it's it's overloading to them. It's when you go to a restaurant and you can order a hundred different things off the menu and you go, well, I'm just going to pick of the first five that I see, I'm going to pick one of those because it's it's sensory overload. Well, it helps. It, it hinders your ability to know what tangibles you need. Again, that tea and profit. What materials do you need? What kind of leashes do you need? What kind of shoes do you need? Where, what inventory do you need to have on hand to conduct those services? It makes that super complex, makes your decision making really overloaded. It can impact your income because some may be profitable, some may not be in the, in the financial sense. It can also mean that if you're operating and you're offering services that go beyond your scope of expertise or your comfort level, it's going to impact your joy in actually offering those. So if you do add services, make sure that they overlap with what you're already doing so that you can know that you are set up for success in that, or at least that they are coming from a true passion that you have to serve people in a new and unique way. So if you're offering dog walking, maybe a a branch off of that is dog adventure hikes. Or if you specialize in senior elder care for dogs and cats, maybe you offer pet photography so that the clients can have a lasting image or a few images of their pets. So hopefully you think of profit and being a profitable business as more than just financial now. But what are some other aspects to being a profitable business? We would love to hear your thoughts and your opinions on this and how you implement them in your business. You can leave us a voicemail at 636-364-8260, or you can send us an email at feedback at petsitterconfessional.com. Thank you very much to our sponsors, Pet Sitters Associates, and our lovely Patreon members for supporting today's show. And ultimately, thank you for taking your time after almost 400 episodes. (laughs) Thank you for taking your time every week to to listen to us and to the people that are, are interviewed on this. We are so appreciative of you. We'll talk with you next time. Bye. (laughs) 